on our pizza pan pumpkin and this is another one of my dollar store crafts I picked this up at the dollar store either for a pizza or cookie sheets or anything like that a round pan is what we're going to uh, start with or a round sheet I should say and I'm going to just spray it with rubbing alcohol and clean it off just to remove anything that may be on it oils uh, handprints, anything like that. We're just going to get it ready to put our paint on it. So once we've got that done nice and clean, we're going to be painting it with uh, multi-surface paints. And these are um, good for any type of multi-surface like glass, like metal, anything like that. That's what's different about it than the other acrylics. And this is by Folk Art. You can pick them up at your craft store or you can pick them up at Michael's. So this color that I'm using today is vivid orange. It's just a little bit more brighter, almost kind of a neon orange. And I'm just going to put it onto my pan. And what I did originally is I kind of started on the edges first, go all the way around the edges, and then we'll come and blend that paint out in just a second here in the middle. That way you're not messing up anything on the inside if you already had it done. And then go ahead and do the lip up on top, all the way around here. So you get that nice and clean. And then we're going to come in and we'll go ahead and do the middle. Now I'm going to paint mine like this being the start and this being the finish and kind of curving it to that, just like my pumpkin would be. So the paint kind of goes the shape of the pumpkin. And that's how I'm going to base coat it. And it's probably, I think on mine, I did two to three coats. And if it still shows through a little bit, that's okay, because we're going to put a bunch more on it, because mine wasn't completely solid. If you wanted it completely solid, you might go with a darker orange to begin with, because red and orange are the kind of color that takes a quite a bit to base coat and yellow those kind of things take quite a bit to base coat so if you start with a richer deeper color then you can go back over it with your lighter color and it doesn't take as many layers so while that's drying we'll go ahead and get the rest of our parts of our jack-o-lantern going here so I'm going to set that up there put my brush away and I'm also going to use paper twist and if you have brown paper twist then use it or if you like this color then go with the natural color but I'm going to undo my paper twist and I'm going to go ahead and paint it brown. I've been using a lot of this and I just pick a natural color from the craft store and then I can paint it any color I want. So however you want to do that is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and paint mine. This first one I did, I did a dark brown. On this one I thought I'd try a medium brown. Just a little bit darker than the paper itself. And you may decide that you just want to leave yours natural. Like I said, there's no right or wrong on that. And you can use whatever acrylic paint. I'm just using my multi-surface because that's what I have out. And then go ahead and do that on both sides. So if we twist that around and something else shows, we want to make sure 
that it's the same color. All right, and that's about a six inch piece. And I'm gonna set him aside and let him dry. If you have your drying board, that's a great thing to put them on. We do have a double dry, double sided drying, drying boards at MiriamJoy.com. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut his leaves. And what I like making their leaves out of is, <coughs> excuse me, the um, burlap. And instead of using the burlap, I get ribbon burlap. And you want one that's stiffer because you can get it stiffer than you can like the regular material. And I want bigger leaves this time. And you can still cut them really big out of this. You could go straight up and down if you wanted them even bigger. And I'm just going to cut that all the way. And I've got one leaf. And you can do two or three leaves, whatever you think it needs on that first one. I have three on this one. I'm just going to do two. And this will last you a long time. This is the end of my projects and I use some for a wedding even so it has lasted a long time and I'm going to go ahead and use my multi-surface colors again I'm going to be using uh, lime green and classic green so I'm going to add a little bit of water to my paint just enough to make it go in the burlap real well not a whole bunch just enough get that in there nice so it's all one color and make sure you do both sides and the last one here it off and then I'm going to bring the classic green in now and we're going to kind of shade the bottom of the leaf a little bit and as you can see I'm using kind of an old scruffy brush you don't want to really use your good brushes it's a little bit rough and I'm going to dip it part way and just kind of blend it out and I'm just going to walk the color up if you can kind of just see that there just kind of walking that color up, not quite halfway of the leaf, but almost. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing. And then on our other leaf. And you could use what other, any colors of green that you like. I just like the vivid colors, especially with Halloween. You could do this pumpkin for Thanksgiving and not put the jack-o'-lantern in it and make it more harvest colors as well. So I'm going to go ahead and let everything dry. I'm going to put a couple of layers on to my pumpkin and then we'll come back and start from there. Okay, I put three coats of my orange on, and you can see he's still spotty. That's okay, because we're going to do some other stuff to him, and he doesn't need to be solid. Now that we've done it, base coated it with our multi-surface paint, I can use different paints on top of that. And I'm going to use my crocus yellow, and it's kind of a nice, brighter yellow. And I'm sponging. I just took a craft sponge. I wrang it out in the water really, really well, so there's no water left in there. And I just dip into my paint and kind of pound it off so I don't get a solid type color and we're just going to kind of sponge here and there and I'm doing the rim kind of first and that lip as well if you can get that down in there and then we're going to kind of sponge on our pumpkin itself you don't want a whole bunch and you want to turn your sponge so you're not getting the same pattern don't do it all the same direction we're just going to kind of brighten it up and you 
could use straw yellow, you don't have to use a little more orange yellow, whatever you want to use. There is no right or wrong on this. Just make sure it kind of matches and we don't want it real solid just to kind of add some life to it. Then we're going to go ahead and let that dry. And that won't take as long because that's a lot thinner coat. And then we're going to go ahead and get started on our details. Now that our paint has all dried, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of lines in. And you can do it with chalk or also with a white charcoal pencil that we carry. And um, I want two, one down the middle and then two. And this bottom one I'm going to bring not quite to the tip like I am at the top to give it more of a flat bottom instead of a rounded one. And we want to make sure that we have room on the outside one that we can do both sides of that as well. So we're going to get those guys on there. That guy could be a little bit skinnier. And just go nice and light. You don't want to scratch that. And then I'm going to float color on this. And if you've never floated color, I do have a video that goes into a little bit more detail. We'll make sure that you put that up. I'm going to blend um, gel medium into my brush. Uh, it's called gel blending medium. And go back and forth and work that in my brush. And then I'm going to come and dip into my color. And on this one, I'm using red iron oxide. And you're going to blend back and forth and back and forth. And what you should see is a lot of color going out to nothing. And I'm using an angle brush because that's what I've always done. You can use a flat brush. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a big flat brush, but there's nothing wrong with that. We want some big, big lines in this. So I'm going to start right down the middle and try and keep that as straight as I can. And I'm going to run out so we'll start over again. Now remember your lines are just for reference point. So if you don't follow them exactly, that's okay. They're just to give you an idea. And I'm going to start at the bottom this time and work my way up to my color. And you could use Adobe Red, you could use Maroon, any of those that you want to use is fine. You also can float with water if you know how to float with water. That is just perfectly fine. Just remember that you're going to have to clean your brush each and every time with a gel. You can get away with it a little bit by not cleaning it, just reloading. And that is okay. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this. We're just going to hurry. You can take more time. That's fine. But what we're doing is we're setting the ridges, the highs and the lows in the pumpkin and creating the roundness of that. That's what we're after is that roundness. So that is what we are doing. And then I also came up against this guy right here and did him up on the edge as well. So we have one more right there. Try to keep him up on the edge, not down. And I'm going to go take him all the way around on both sides. Like I said, take your time and do that. Got a little booger there. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I do with this one just one more. Let it dry if you want to go back over it like this guy right here. I've got kind of nice and light. Just let it dry and then go back over it and darken it up. Let's flip it over and we're going to do the other side now. So we've got that going this direction. We want the other going the other direction. So if you were looking straight on at the pumpkin, this would be directly in the middle. So that's why we flowed 
the other sides now. Remember, we want to keep that guy up at the top, coming to a point in the bottom. We're kind of just making it kind of come down so the bottom looks more flat down there. And then we're going to pick up where we left off down here and take that all the way around the edge. And I am not doing it perfect. I'm just getting it done. And that's okay. If this is your first time, just be proud of yourself that you're just doing it. I always tell people that 90% of it is just doing it. Don't be hard on yourself. And if you give it to somebody, don't point out your flaws. They'll never see them. You don't hear the artist pointing out their flaws. So just be proud that you did it and that you can give it as a gift or decoration. Okay, so now we're going to come back and we're going to do the opposite of those. We're going to highlight on the other side now. And I'm going to be using crocus yellow. You could use straw yellow or different ones like that. Any of those are fine. Empire Gold is another one. Uh, this is a little bit brighter than those. And I usually like the rich kind of yellow colors, but I'm going just a little bit brighter. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the opposite of what we shaded. So we're highlighting now. We're still floating, but we're highlighting because we're using a lighter color. And we'll pull that down there. I'm just going to make a clean sweep to make that nice and even. They tell you if you're a teacher, you're painting something as a sample, not to paint it nice so that other people aren't discouraged with theirs. But if you're doing it for a gift, do your best. See the roundness that that's really starting to bring out right now? Be a little bit careful with your um, pan. I think they tell you it's about 21 days for it to cure to get nice and hard. So allow for that. I need to let that dry before I come back and then put another layer in there to kind of even that out a bit. I'm also thinking about doing some pumpkins and pie pans for Thanksgiving. I think that'd be really cute. Kind of the same idea only in pie pans, but not jack-o'-lanterns, just, just the uh, pie pan. Mm -hmm. When we talk about cured, it means kind of the paint to harden or set all the way. Now, we didn't do one on this guy because he's kind of meeting in the middle and what he actually should be is two dark to dark colors there because you don't have a highlight. I got the wrong color. So it should be two shadings. And so we're going to do another float right next to that one of our red iron oxide. Just bump up right next to that. Now 
And like I said, don't judge me for what I'm doing now. <laughs> We're just getting at them for the video. And then I came back and I did put just a few highlights. Like if I was doing it there. Just to kind of round it even more. Okay. Now, we remember we've got our flatter bottom down here. So this is our top. And you kind of want to let it dry. And then once it's dry, we're going to go ahead and start thinking about the shape of our pumpkin. And I would let it dry longer than what I'm doing right now. And I am working with my charcoal pencil and I'm going to apply, if I can get a little bit of flame on it, it lightens up the charcoal pencil, makes softens it, it makes it easier to write with. And it is not going to give me, we'll see if we've got our little chalk maybe here. And I'm just going to do a basic shape again. I don't want to do anything complicated, and I really like the basic traditional jacks. I think those are a lot of fun. And we can adjust those later on if we need to. And think about your mouth going from the same line over to kind of the same line. I'm going to allow for a tooth or two in here. One there at least, and then back up. So we're going to base coat that with our black paint. And I'm going to go ahead and use my multi-surface paint again, just because I have it, and I think it does better with the pan. It's going to adhere better to your pan. And I'm just using a little flat straight brush. Especially I can get in those little curves and tips a little bit better. And you can get real exact, that's fine. Get those points nice and, sh and sharp if you want to. However you think it should be. usually keep q-tips so if I have something like that that's not quite where I want it I just do the damp q-tip lift that right up Just look at them, kind of see if they're about the same size. Again, I'm not going to worry about being perfect. So it's just supposed to be a fun piece. Won't this look great on your door? So I'm going to bring that down. What I'm going to do right here is I'm going to figure out where my teeth are and go around those first. And I think in this one I'm only going to put two teeth. So that I kind of know where I need to come. The rest of my mouth. Bring it up to that point.
The other nice thing about the uh, multi-surface paint is it's a little bit thicker, so it doesn't take as many coats sometimes. Just try not to keep the any wrinkles in your paint. Clean, clear those off so you don't have any ridges. I know I've got my paint all the way up to the top of my brush, and that's not good. You should try to keep the paint out of the top of your brush. It'll make it last longer if you can keep it out of there. Now just come back. You could let it dry and do another coat on this. That's fine. But I'm just going to spot here and there and then I'm just going to go ahead and put the white in. But I would recommend letting it dry all the way first. And I am just going to add a little bit of water to my liner brush. And we're just going to dip into our white paint and twist that out. And we get a picture of twisting that out. Or make sure our cameraman can see that. Just kind of an ink, ink consistency and twist that out. And then that makes that really good um, to go. And I'm just going to do a line on each side. I'll do one, two on the nose, and I'm going to do one down the eyes on the same side. So you have him looking one direction. When you kind of do him different opposite sides, you kind of lose where he's looking at. And then I'm also going to do one across the mouth. And all the way up here and what we're doing is we're kind of adding reflective light and like I said if you let them dry it'll be a little bit better and I'm going to do the same thing down here pull that up and there as well if you wanted to go around the teeth you could, or we could even put one at the bottom of the teeth, kind of to make it look like it's connected. So however you want to do that, there is no right or wrong on that. So on the eyes, we're going to do a sparkle in the eye. And I'm going to do it to the left, and we're just going to do a star, just one down, one across, and one in between each one of those. And that gives him the twinkle in his eye. The fun of the holiday spirit. Okay, so I'm going to add some dots, and the painting is basically going to be done. I'm going to do a dot in the center of his eyes to clean that up and I'm going to do one, two, three up the sides of those. And you can do however many you think you need. On the other one, I did it here, but on this one, I'm going to do it there. And what you're doing is descending dots. You're running out of paint. I'm going to do these at the corners of the mouths. And I'm going to do one going this direction here. Didn't quite get in the paint the same. And I think I'm going to do one this direction here. And I'm going to turn this guy into a sparkle, a twinkle in his mouth. Not his eye, but his mouth this time. You could even do one, let's do that, let's do one more over here. To me, he just thinks that he needs that. And one there. 
and you can put those dots anywhere you think you need them. Okay, at this point in time, I'm going to let him finish drying up, and I'm going to spray varnish him. You could brush varnish him. There's no right or wrong. That's just going to really help seal that all the way in, and then we'll get ready to assemble him. I went outside, and I varnished my um, jack-o'-lantern. This one I used matte varnish, and this one I used gloss, so you can really see this one's a lot shinier than the other one is, and depending on what look you like, you can use that uh, varnish. That's fine. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and put our stem on now. We painted him brown, and I'm going to tear him off so he comes to a point, and we're going to glue him on with hot glue right on that edge right there so kind of get him in that lip real good so he's on that and down there so I'm gonna let that set for a while while he's doing that we're gonna go ahead and finish up our leaves I'm going to just use my permanent marker and my green permanent marker and I'm going to put some veins into my leaves and just right down the line. Believe it or not, I picked my permanent managers markers up at the dollar store and they really work really well. I've had them for quite a while since Christmas projects of last year so they do work pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue this onto my stem now. And we're going to hot glue the other one. And however you want them to go, I think I'm going to make that one go up just a little bit. And on this one I'm only doing two, on that one I do three. You could do a third one, that's fine. So now that our stem is dry, I'm going to twist this to a point at the very top. We could have even done this stem a little bit longer if we wanted to. The other one I have just a little bit longer. So we've got that guy there. All right. So I am going to put a acrylic cue on him, and I'm just going to use a green pipe cleaner. And I'm just going to wrap it around a pencil all the length of this one. You could do a brown one, whatever you wanted. And I'm going to bend that kind of in half so I have a straight part that I can glue on there. And then I'm going to decide what color of berries I like, if I like the orange or the purple. And I really like the purple. The purple just adds that pop of color to it. I've got spiders crawling all over me here. And so I'm just going to take a bunch of these. And we're going to glue those on in the center there. done with this part I really felt that it needed more color so we went ahead and did the tie or the bow in black raffia and some flowers so we'll be putting that on it just was missing something at the bottom and I also put some spiders on it and I ran out of big spiders these are little spider rings and I use these a lot and we can put them in a couple of spots since they're a little bit smaller just cut the ring part off Maybe we'll put one down at the bottom with the flowers or something we'll see Let's see where I want that guy to go just to give it a more fun feel and my raffia bow these guys let's pull those out a little bit they're kind of scrunched in there too tight 
So I'm going to glue it on right in that crease there. Hold that for a moment. And then I put some different flowers on. I picked up some smaller flowers again at the dollar store. And I'm going to make sure I use my leaves with these too. I'm going to pull this bottom part off. And this has got three leaves, which is perfect. So that's going to kind of be our base for our flowers there. And I, this has got a cute little curly cue on it too, which would be fun to put into our piece as well. I use almost everything, even the other parts, leftover flowers, leftover leaves, you name it, I use it. So let me see how I kind of did this guy here. I've got one of those and two little ones here. And what I'm going to do so they lay better, I'm going to cut that bottom part off. And we're going to glue that to my finger uh, to the sides. And you always can add berries or anything else in that as well. That kind of gives it that little feeling. And this little guy, this little curly cue, I really like. So I'm going to go ahead and put him into that. You could have used him up at top instead of the little pipe cleaner thing that we did if you wanted to, too. And I do the curly cues with little wire as well. To hang these up, I took a tab off of a soda can. And you have this ridge right here. So I'm just going to use my E6000. And we're going to glue that right on. And you want it hanging over the ridge. And make sure it will hang straight up and down. And let that dry. It tell you 24 hours, but probably overnight would be good. And then you can just simply hang that wherever you want that to go on to. So that is our pie pan pumpkin. Wasn't that a lot of fun? There's so much you could do with that. And like I said, Think about not it being a jack-o'-lantern, but using it for Thanksgiving as well. You could put a, a grapevine wreath around the outside, which I think would be really fun and festive. So think about different things like that and just add into what I've taught you here today with the basics. Um, give us a thumbs up. Tell us you liked the video. Come on over to my Facebook page at Miriam Joy's Waxy Crafty Corner where we're putting up stuff for you there as we're making it so you can enjoy the holiday season. Thank you. God bless.